You know, I love school buses, but if you're gonna live in one, it can't stay that way forever. And depending on the rules and laws in your part of the woods, you might have to take off a lot of the equipment that signifies that this is a school bus. I know here in Colorado, anything that says the word school has to go. In your state and many other states, things like these flasher lights have to be taken off. In this video, I'm gonna go over how easy it is to swap these out for a set of flasher patches and keep you in compliance with your local laws. First step is gonna be taking off the old flashers. And they're always held in by some rusty Phillips head screws. So I like to use an impact gun with a nice long extension. That'll get you in here under the eyebrows and that'll let you get those screws out, hopefully without stripping them. If they do strip, they'll need to drill them out or cut them off with an angle grinder. And if it does happen, don't be surprised because they're almost always like that. Don't be surprised, you know? They're just almost always like that. With the lights off, I'm gonna grab a scraper and uh, we'll just get this sealant off of here and then we'll be ready to hang up our patches and pre-drill our holes. There are a lot of ways to get stickers and adhesive off a of bus. I'm a big fan of these eraser wheels. I'll show you real quick what they do for you. Let me show you what I did there. Just about, I don't know, 10 or 15 seconds of work and this side's already done. So I'm gonna finish up uh, cleaning these off and then I'll take you around the back where I've already got some patches ready to go and show you how I drill and seal them. Here we are at the back and I've gone ahead and done a couple steps to get us prepared but I'll walk you through them right now. <clears throat> so. This is a lot like what a flasher patch you'll get from schoolie.com would look like. You can also make your own. We made this one. It's out of 18 gauge galvanil. It's just, uh, you know, remnants that we have from roof raises and such. We hold on to them. What I've gone ahead and done on these patches is actually marked out my hole pattern for the rivets that I'll be using to attach it and pre-drilled those. Then I held this in place and going through one of the holes that I'd already pre-drilled in the patch, I made a mark in this corner and then I did another one up in this corner. I then took my drill and drilled out a 17 64ths inch hole in each of those corners and then using two bolts, bolted this in place. And I did that so that now my pattern, this template, will be bolted in place and I'll go ahead and go through with my drill and drill out each of the holes. And I'll do the same thing on that patch over there, which is also bolted in place. Once that's done, I'll unbolt these, clean everything off one last time, apply sealant to the back of the patch, and then rivet it on. Now that we've got our holes pre-drilled in not only the patch, but the cap here, I'm gonna go ahead and unbolt this guy, 
We'll wipe this down with some alcohol just to make it nice and clean. I'll load the back up with a sealant of my choice. I think I'll go with some ProFlex by GeoCell and shoot this on with a handful of quarter inch rivets. There are a lot of great sealant options out there for this application of securing these patches to the roof without leaks. Around here, we really like to use a product called ProFlex RV. It's made by a company called GeoCell. It's like silicone, but it's a little more durable. In my experience, it has a little better adhesion. Um, you could use anything though from silicone all the way up to like an automotive grade um, seam sealer or panel adhesive even. But what's most important is that you just get something behind it, okay? Um, so we'll dab this around our holes and go shoot this thing on. If you look, I labeled these patches just so that in case any of these holes were a little bit off, we won't get ourselves into trouble when we go to assemble it. Ah, delicious. Now you really can use whatever fastener you would feel most comfortable with on a project like this. If that is self-tapping screws, no problem. If you want to use nuts and bolts, go for it. But around here, we really like rivets and we like them for a few reasons, but my favorite reason is that they pinch super tight and they can't ever vibrate loose. Awesome fastener. So I'll be riveting this on with quarter inch structural pop rivets. Totally overkill? Yes. Is it what we have? Yes. Now, to do this without making a mess, let's see here. Get our first one lined up. Well, I'm just pleased as punch. Look at that nice squeeze out of the sealant around the edges. Let me zoom back. That looks mint. Practically stock. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a little cup of soapy water and just tidy that up and this project is done. That wasn't so bad, was it? Doing a mod like this is something that takes a couple hours of your time, but in my opinion, it looks a lot better than just taking the old spray paint and over the old lights. This classes it up a bit. Plus, those old lights have a tendency to leak. I've seen it once or twice. And if you do a patch job like this with sealants and rivet, I'll guarantee you, you're not gonna have leak problems out of these flasher light holes anytime soon. Thanks for checking out this video. I hope it was informative. Make sure you like and subscribe so that you'll be up to date as soon as I release my next video full of schoolie pro tips. Thanks for watching.